Being humbled. Being humbled seems built into the human condition. I mean, which of us won't wind up humbled and most of us will be humbled many times in our lives no matter the state of our dreams realization or where we reside in the regions of success or failure interesting that the concept of being humbled itself is multifaceted and leads to the place of bowing to the divine and yet arriving there down seemingly opposite roads a setback can take us there or realizing we made a mistake and at the same time, we can be humbled by being in the presence of something divinely inspired, a mountaintop view, a vision of space at night, a work of art that dances with genius. Both remind us of our limitations. It's funny as well and maybe contradictory superficially that humility in pursuing dreams and all the strength and courage it takes to overcome our demons and limited self-beliefs that we also have to ignite something within us that overcomes all that, all of our so-called doubts about our abilities to accomplish something great. But self-doubt isn't humility either, nor is total self-belief that is from the ego. In the books and the motivational talks of others will often say things like, you are unlimited, you can do anything, believe in your greatness, you are the master of your destiny or other such motivational ideas and it's tricky because indeed, you do have to arrive at a certain place of self-belief and overcome self-limiting beliefs, whereas the Bible has things like this to say, humble yourself before the Lord and He will lift you up, James 4.10, or do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather, in humility, value others above yourself, Philippians 2.3. So, which is it? I'm confused. Do we believe in our own greatness or do we humble ourselves before the Lord or is there a way to thread the needle so that we can do both at the same time? Because uh, we see these leaders of success who don't exactly preach about the virtues of humility as much as seem to have, be full of unwavering self-belief and bravado. Meanwhile, most of us struggle with a lacking self-esteem that is at least the cousin of humility, if not best friends with humiliation. It's a strange dance, this life of being a human on planet Earth, and I don't pretend to have the answers. I am, in fact, humble about this. I think. Part of the answer might be in the fact that the experience of being humbled happens when we see a reflection of God in works of genius or the unlimited sky and at the same time when we've been set back or had a prayer go unanswered or didn't achieve something we thought we might. Both experiences have us submit to a power that is greater than ourselves and don't feel like the blooming of success but might in fact be just that because when we are humbled, our ego gets course corrected. We are reminded that though we must be driven into action, we are ultimately merely a passenger in a car driven by a greater power. And from the place of being humbled, we are less likely to be as egocentric with our work. Think of someone who believes they are the center of the universe present, presenting their work as opposed to someone presenting work with humility and in the service of God and for the betterment of their brothers and sisters, which would more likely garner success, which would be more attractive. So though I don't pretend to understand the workings of God in our lives and why we get humbled on our path to a dream's fulfillment, I think it's important to recognize that moments of being humbled on the path aren't signs to give up as much as moments to reassess the space from which we are coming from. Perhaps it's time to say to ourselves that we overshot the mark with self-belief, which seems like a funny thing to say on a subject where more self-belief is generally called for rather than less. And this is also highly personal. You, in fact, may need more self-belief. And being humbled doesn't mean you don't have self-belief as much as it means aligning your self-belief with a power that is greater than you and align your vision with His will over your own. Pride comes before the fall. And what is His will for us anyway? It's not exactly written on a neon sign in Times Square. I suppose we learn it as we get course corrected on our way to pursuing a vision. By humility and the fear of the Lord, 
our riches and honor and life. Proverbs 22.4. To simplify it further, I'd say this means come from the heart, not the ego. Come from a place of serving others over serving yourself, which is no small task as most of us are fear-based, shame-soaked creatures out here battling to survive. So it's no small task to be humbled here for we are pushed to attach to our egos and self-will even by people who mean well. But God is here to course correct and make adjustments like a soul chiropractor. And the adjustment from ego driven to humble isn't usually fun, like waking up from a cocaine bender with the realization that you were operating from a space of delusion. It's no fun, but after the adjustment, adjustment sets in, we keep going from a place where our heart is placed on the mantle above our head and persevere from that place, from a place of humility, putting God first and putting first others over ourself. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up. James 4.10 P.S. I wrote all that having morning, morning coffee at my favorite corporate coffee shop and left it unfinished to drive myself to the cold plunge. Getting on the highway, I noticed a sign on the other side, a digital billboard like they have in Times Square. Different ads moving across it. I glanced over it and right then and there was an ad and with big letters it read, give from your heart 